Hi Floss Tube, it's Nancy Quilting Stitcher. Today is April 28th, 2018. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for subscribing. Um, thank you for watching. I've had a few new subscribers, so welcome to my channel. I hope that you find everything that I have to show you um, to your liking. Okay, I have a lot to show you and it's just like all spread out so I'm going to do my best to tr kind of keep this in order but it may not happen <laughs> okay so um, it's been a while since I've done a video it's been about three weeks um, I've got a lot of st stitching done um, plus there's been some other things going on it's been this has been the month of broken down vehicles in at our house um, started with my daughter's van her engine uh, went out in her van and that was toward that was the end of March and I told her I said you can drive my car um, her dad was supposed to get her an engine get hers to get hers fixed um, he was gonna put a new engine in it for her so I said well you can drive my car until he gets that done um, sorry my lighting is just not good tonight and I'm sorry <laughs> Um, so I figured she could borrow my car. Hopefully he could hurry and get it in in a couple of weeks and yeah, I could get my car back. So my intentions was I was going to drive my husband's pickup truck. I don't like driving it because I'm really short. And so I feel like I'm in this truck and I can barely see over the steering wheel. And anyway, so I ended up borrowing my, my middle daughters or my middle child. That's my my oldest daughter her car she had um, has an extra car so I ended up I'm driving her car anyway well my youngest daughter um, she a couple of weekends ago went up to um, to see one of her friends and spend the weekend she took her kids up there and spend the weekend and um, she was getting ready to come home and she started headed home and something was not right on my car so she called me she actually had somebody go look at it um, she had a f her friend up there knew a mechanic and he went and looked at it and he says uh, don't drive this do not drive this um, she was two and a half hours away I ended up having to have my car towed as on a Sunday which was not cheap and my insurance did pay some of it but it still wasn't cheap so got it here um, it needs a back the rear axle or rear end I I don't know something in the back rear end needs to be replaced so her car was sitting out in front of my house my car was sitting out in front of my house um, my husband has two Jeeps older older Jeeps that he is I don't know I I really don't know what he's doing. I think he's gonna take parts out of one, put in another, restore, I don't know, restore one, I don't know. Anyway, so I have those in my driveway. So my house, I'm literally, we've had, what, seven or eight cars in our, between in front of our house and our driveway for about two weeks. And finally, this week, my car is in at the shop getting fixed right now. We, I was hoping to have it done yesterday, but I guess it, he didn't get it completely done. So hopefully the first part of this week, I'll get my car back so my daughter can have her car back. Um, my daughter with the, the van that her motor went out, uh, we took it out to her dad's house. So it's gone. So the only car that is in the driveway at this very moment is my car <laughs> or the car I'm driving. I shouldn't say not even mine. It's my daughter's car, but the one I'm driving is in the driveway. So my house, the front of my house does no longer look like a car, a graveyard for dead cars. Um, so that's been, that's been my April. Isn't that just like crazy that April has been the year or the month for broken down vehicles. Okay, so my last video, I believe I showed this as a finished stitch, but it was not fully finished and I have now fully finished it. It is no bees, no honey. 
by um, Birds of a Feather. And this is just a thrift store frame. I was going to paint it because it's kind of chipped up in that. I was going to paint it. And I decided I wasn't going to because the color of the frame is like the exact colors of my gloss and the no bees, no honey. So there it is. My thrift store frame. Don't even know how much I paid for it. It doesn't have a price on it. But I know I got it at the thrift store. <laughs> I don't buy frames new. Um, so that was my fully finished. I do have several finished things. Let's see. Um, the first one I have fully finished is, excuse me, like I said, I've got stuff kind of scattered everywhere, and I'm not sure where everything is. Okay, so, oh, it's right here. Okay, so my first fully finished, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be mixing my plan, some of my plans in with my finishes. So my first, so my next fully finished is hometown, hometown holidays. And this one was the fire firehouse or fire station. I think is what it was called. There we go. And I added the white beads, like I've been adding to all of them just to give them the little a little bit extra for the snowflakes and then the only other thing I added is okay on the bells rather than do a stitch I added a gold bead for the bell part of it and then for the berries I added red red beads so there is my finish the only thing I changed I did change something on this chart is the flagpole was stitched so that when it went up, it was touching the house or the fire station. It was touching the building. I've never seen a flagpole touch a building, at least if it was installed correctly. It didn't. So I just moved it over a stitch, and which made it not touch the building. Everything else is exactly the right amount of distance between the firehouse and that um, I just moved the flagpole over so that was my fully finish or my finish on that one um, so my plans are for May is to start the florist shop and um, yeah my sister was a florist. She actually went to school to be a florist and then she worked in a floral shop and then eventually her and her husband bought one and they ran that for a few years and then um, they started getting, their kids started getting older and going off to college and she didn't want to be tied down to the flower shop anymore. So she, they sold the business. But that's the next one I'm going to do. So fully finished um or am I put this stuff okay the next one that is fully finished is also from Santa's Village and it is if I can show this to you the actual whole thing is Mrs. Claus's I think it's called Mrs. Claus's cookie shop by Country Cottage Neal Works. And yes, I realize that Mrs. Claus does not have any eyes. We'll be putting buttons or beads for her eyes. And then there is a cookie button that goes right there. So that is finished. So now I have the entire first row finished. There we go. So the next one I will start, we'll start the second row. So it will start right here under Santa's, Santa's house. Which brings me into my plans for this one for next month. 
it's going to be Santa's Stocking Store. So that one will be started probably May 1st or 2nd, right around there. My next one that was fully finished is the Shepherd's Bushes Stocking, Tina's Stocking, which is that one. I ended up having to order this chart because as I was working off of the working copy, um, I realized I did not know how to do her hair because the working copy did not have instructions for, to do the hair. So I ordered the chart and the chart really doesn't say how to do the hair, but it does give me a, a good picture of it. And so I think I can figure out how to add it on there. So this is my finish on that. Hold it back so you can see it all. And I do have, I have not added her hair yet because I'll do that when I add the charms. So let me show you what I've done. So the chart just shows it like that. And I added another border to the top to make it big enough. And then to make it wide enough, I added that flower and that flower to make it wider. And then for this border with the trees, I added these cherries, this pear, and this cherry to make it wide enough. And then I just repeated this border up here. And then we go down to the bottom here. Let me turn that off. So, and then on the bottom, I have the checkerboard. I just extended it out both ways. The flowers with the bees, I just extended them out, and then I just repeated the the border down there. And I think to fill in this space and this space right here, I may add a B button when I go to do put the, the charm pack on. So that is my finish for that. And so next month I'll start on another, another shepherd's bush. Um, I'm I don't know, not sure which one I pulled out. I cannot remember, and I don't have it sitting out here. But it'll be a boy one because I'm alternating between boys and girls. Then my next finish, <laughs> told you I had a lot, is Halloween rules. And I am stitching it all as one. I've started at the bottom. And this one was through some fun, which is right there. And I'll just show you the whole thing. Maybe I'll show you the whole thing if I can get the fabric correct. There we go. So there's my brew some fun. So I am a third done now. Pretty good. These are super, super, super easy to do. I can do one in a couple of hours. So a lot of times what I'll do is when I get up in the morning and get ready for work is I'll get up and get ready. And then I usually have about half an, uh, an hour, um, give or take to before I have to head to work. And so I'll fix something to eat really quick and eat. And then I'll still have probably 45 minutes, half hour, 45 minutes, and I'll, I'll stitch on this. I can get it almost halfway done. So like I said, a couple of hours and I can have these done. So there we go. And the fabric is just fabric that I love this fabric. It's just Ada that I had in my stash and I just rip tied it. So the next one I will work on will be this one, sit for a spell. And then my last finish for the for since my last video is since Halloween rules is going so fast, you know, I can sit down and just in a couple of hours get one of them done. I decided to pull out my Christmas rules, which I had started on my on the 12 days of Christmas when I did those starts. And I decided if I can get those done that fast, I can 
do Christmas rolls also and get one done a month. So I did Welcome Friends. And um, my daughter, she dropped the kids off at school at 8 o'clock and then she came over to my house and she had a doctor's appointment at 10. And so she just pulled out her Santa's village and was working on it. And I thought, well, I'm going to pull out the Christmas rules and work on it while she's here. In that hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes she was there, I, I got it done. I finished it. It doesn't have an O. I know it's missing the O, but a button goes there. So, welcome, friends. Cute. And this is also fabric that I was in my stash and I just dyed it using red dye. Next, I think that is all, that is all of my finishes. That seems like a lot, and but everything I'm doing is like really quick. And I, sti I stitch every day. Um, in the mornings before I go to work, like I said, I'll sometimes have 45 minutes, half an hour, whatever, I'll stitch. Um, and then I stitch in, in the evenings when I, now that it's, I may not get as much done now that it's starting to get warmer and stuff like that. But typically, I can stitch a couple of hours in the evenings. I am not a, I'm not, I don't sleep well. So I go to bed really late. And so that's kind of my stitching time is when it starts to get dark and I'm in for the night and supper's done and that's my stitch. So, but everything I'm stitching is, I think the most complicated one I'm working on is probably the Santa's Village one, if you can believe it. The Shepherd's Bush ones, they are super easy. They are going super fast. I mean, it's just, I can't believe how simple they are. And I think mostly the reason the Santa's Village one seems to be the one that takes me the longest is because I don't really, I'm not really enjoying the fabric. And it's an opalescent fabric. And I have to be really careful when I stitch because for some reason when I, it splits my threads. When I go to put the needle in the hole, it kind of splits the threads. So I have to really, really, really watch and be careful when I do that. So that one seems to be taking me the longest out of all the ones that I've been doing. So, um, now for my whips. So the only, so I was working on, I only had one active whip. Had, that's the key word. I had one active whip. And that was this one by Cricut Collection. And I'm doing this one that says fresh eggs. Now, if you remember, I started this as one of my 12 days of Christmas starts. And I had only worked on it an hour. And so I only had, I'm not sure where I was at. I think it was maybe this G right here. I don't know if you can even see it. I think I just had maybe two rows, two of the up and down rows done. And I didn't like it because I didn't think that the white was standing out enough. You really couldn't see the white on the fabric. So what my, t my intentions was, is I was just going to rip it out. And it was fabric that I had coffee and tea stains. And so what I was going to do is just rip out the threads that, you know, the few stitches I had done. And I was just going to take that same fabric, put it back into the coffee and tea stain to make it darker and just reuse the fabric. Well, when I was taking those stitches out, I accidentally got one of the threads and I tore the fabric. So I just got another piece of fabric, um, coffee and tea stained it and I taint, I did it darker and I love it. it. So I started, I restarted it, looked wonderful. Tur oh, so pretty. It was just turning out beautiful. I had this G completely done with the chicken. I had this G completely done with the chicken. I had the chicken, there's some chicken feed down here. Um, these vines, I see I had this whole vine here done with the leaves and the berries. And I think I had 
this one done with the leaves and the berries. And then I had the R E S on fresh. All done. It was in my Q snap. It was the only thing that could fit into the well of the Q snap. So I took the Q snaps off. And I had stitched it the wrong way on the fabric. So instead of my fabric going this way, my fabric was going this way. So I had my two G's, one here and one here. And I even thought, okay, I just won't finish it because I'm going to frame it because I have a wall in my kitchen that I want it to go on. And I thought, okay, instead of framing it, I'll figure out something else to finish it. So I counted over to see if the S would fit and the E would fit. The S would fit barely. And when I say barely, it was like taking in the last row of threads to put the last row of the chicken's butt on it. So it wasn't going to work. And then the E, the E was even like part of his whole tail feathers would have been gone. So, um, I was just, I was so upset when I took those, I, I mean, I was just sick. I'm like, seriously, I have never, seriously, I've never done that before. And I think it's because I always use hoops. So I always see all this fabric and I know which way it goes. Well, I put it on the Q snap and I didn't see all the fabric. So I... Post, I posted on Facebook. I think, it's pro, I think I posted on Mania. Anybody see what's wrong with this picture? And they're like, oh boy. <laughs> yeah. And people gave me some really good ideas of things I could do, but I really, I really want it to be like this. Because some people said, well, just, you know, take and put the, and do eggs going down. You know, going down vertically, or you have the two G's, put the E up here and the S down here. Do it that way. And I just didn't want to do it that way. I wanted it this way. So I put it away Friday night, or Friday afternoon is when I discovered it. And I put it away, and I thought, okay, I just need to put it away, decide what I'm going to do, whether I'm going to rip the stitches out, start over on the same piece of fabric. Or was I going to just get a whole new piece of fabric and restart it? Because this will be this is the you know would have been the third time I was restarting this dang thing. And so I just put it away for the night. And I text a couple of my stitchy friends, and I'm like, oh, because you know even though my husband saw how upset and disappointed I was about it. He's not a stitcher. He doesn't get it. So I text a couple of my stitchy friends. I'm like, oh, look what I did. You know, getting, I needed some sympathy. I needed sympathy. Anyway, um, I picked it up yesterday morning and decided, well, I'm going to start ripping the stitches out and see how fast it goes. Because if it goes fairly quickly, then I decided I was just going to rip the stitches out and restart it on the same piece of fabric. Um, so I started ripping it out and they were going, they were coming out pretty fast. I wasn't trying to save the thread. I was just using the seam reaper and catching the threads and ripping them out that way. So it was going pretty quickly. So I did a little, I took out some stitches a little bit in the morning and then I had some time yesterday afternoon. I sat down and Pretty much, I got everything all done. So last night, um, I picked it up about 8 o'clock again last night. And I worked on it a little bit last night for a couple of hours. And then I've worked on it probably, I worked on it all morning this morning. And this is where I'm at. So... This is the third time I have started this chart, but I have never finished it. So there it is. And I love it. Um, so it, it is a very simple chart. It is going very quickly. 
Um, I am almost back to where I was when I realized I had done it wrong. Um, I do have plenty of fabric on my sides. This look, there's hardly any on the top, but I have quite a bit on my sides. Excuse me, I gotta bite my nails. I think I'm about done with allergies, I'm hoping. Um, yeah. So, right now I'm working on the white chicken, who's, this is part of it, he sits on a nest on top of this G. So I'm almost back to where I was when I realized I had made a mistake. If I make another mistake, I'm not restarting this again. I'll put it away in maybe a few years from now. But I don't think it's going to come to that. And all the MC floss. So, and... Needle minders. I will talk about needle minders in a minute because, oh, my needle minders. But I just want to show you this one. My little chicken. I made him. Isn't he cute? thought he was cute. So there is the chicken the eggs one. Fresh eggs. And anyway. So um, Friday night when I realized what I had done, I pulled out, I have some stuff that's kitted up that I've kitted up for a while back. So as I'm finishing, because I have the five things that I'm working on every month, the stockings, Santa's Village, um, Hometown Holidays, Halloween Rolls, and obviously the, now the Christmas Rolls. So I'm working on those. And when I get them all done, because I kind of alternate back and forth with them throughout the month until those are done, and then I pull out a whip. Or if I have some, if I've finished a whip, I pull out one of my kitted projects. So my whip for this month was the eggs. And I obviously would have had it done by the end of April if I wouldn't have screwed it up twice. So um, Friday night when I put the eggs away into timeout, I pulled out one of my kitted things. And I decided I need something besides Christmas. I am working on all holiday Christmassy stuff. And I need something different. So I had kitted up Very Schoolers July. So Friday night I pulled this out and this is this is better. This is I this is the one I'm doing. Is this one? So I started on it. And this is where I got. Not bad. Um, just using all of the DMC, call for DMC colors. Um, this is on 14 count Ada that I had in my stash. I coffee and tea stained it. When I, I when I coffee and tea stain, I do a whole bunch at a time. And I, I'm actually really liking that better than using the Rit dye. I just, I just like the look of it. So that most of my stuff is just stitched on coffee and tea dye fabric but so anyway that's where I'm at on that one and then I let's see if I can put everything here um so when Priscilla and Chelsea were talking about doing the bless our home stitch along when they first announced that they were going to do it I um I'm like I think I have that chart excuse me So I went in to my file cabinet and I did, I had the chart. So I pulled it out and I thought, oh, I really should do that. Cause then it will give me something for summer to put in my house. And I sat it here in my sewing room on my sewing table, which is right here. And I, um, it sat there for probably a week or so and I kept looking at it thinking do I want to do it do I not I have so much oh, I have so many whips you know I have st I'm still working on stuff for my 12 days of Christmas starts I started in December and um, plus I have all these other whips I'm doing and like do I want to do it and then I thought no I'm not gonna do it and 
so I put it up. And then last Saturday, the 20, I believe it was the 21st, I was watching Jamie and Jordan from Basic Stitches um, on their video, their Fosted video. And they were showing their progress on Bless Our Homes. Bless Our Home. And so, and then Jamie showed how she was going to finish it. And I absolutely loved how she was going to finish it. And what she's going to do is she bought, it's a flag. It's a wooden flag. And it's, it looks all rustic and everything. And she's going to mount it on that flag. And she bought it at Big Lots. So if you want to see what it looks like, go and watch their video from last week. But anyway, she bought it at Big Lots. I don't have a Big Lots. Nowhere close to me. I think the closest one may be two and a half hours away. So I'm not driving two and a half hours to buy this sign or take a chance that they even have it anymore. But I do have a very talented daughter that can make it for me. So I decided I'm going to do it. I'm going to bite the bullet and I'm going to make, I'm going to join this stitch along. This is what it looks like if no one knows. I'm sure everybody's seen it. It's been on Facebook, Instagram. Everybody's been shown on their Flosstube videos. So, I don't have any of the called for colors because it's crescent colors and I have very, very few crescent colors. And so, and so, and the very few I have wasn't the ones that I called for. So, I just went into my stash of fancy floss and pulled out my own colors so these are the colors i am using of the fancy floss the rest i am going to use dmc so the house this is um color and cottons this was when i was in their thread of the month club this was one of the colors i got it's called princess blue and i'm using that for the house and then for the red i am using um, Schoolhouse Red by Gentle Arts. And then for the green, which is just the grass and the vines, I'm using Baby Spinach for the green. So those are my three colors. The rest are um, DMC colors. The brown for the roof, I am using 433 and 435. And I am going to um, mix them together and so I can get a variegated look. Um, I did that with my Lantern Lane. When I did it for the, the roof on the Lantern Lane, I used and made my own variegation. So I started this today, this afternoon, actually. Um, I put the eggs away and this afternoon when I sat back down, um, to, I have a rare Saturday off. I never, have, I always work on Saturdays and I have the, actually the whole weekend off. I usually work Saturdays and Sundays. And so I fixed, I put the eggs up. I got ready for the day. I fixed some lunch and I sat down and I thought, you know what? I'm just going to spend the day. I don't have anywhere to go, no place to go, nothing, to, you know, nothing pressing. I'm just going to stitch all day. So after lunch, I picked this up and I started this. This is how much I got done just today. Look at that. Hang on. I'm going to use this nifty little thing here. See if I can get it to do better. Here. Oh, please. <laughs> Sorry. I am not prepared not prepared tonight okay so there you go is that pretty I love 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 that blue and first at first when I started stitching it I'm like oh I don't know maybe it's too bright no I love it. It's kind of a, it's bright, but it's kind of dark. I don't know how to explain it. So, yeah. So that was what I stitched on this afternoon. 
Yay! And part into the evening. I think I worked on it a little bit into the evening. Well, I know I did. Because I worked on it and then I ate dinner. I ate kind of a late dinner tonight. So the door, I just did a strand of 433 and a strand of 435 for the door. So there's not, I mean, it kind of has a little bit of irrigation, but not a whole lot. But when I do the roof, I'm going to do so that you can see the irrigation. So anyway, that's what I did this afternoon. And then this is another needle minder that I made. Isn't that cute? So those are my whips. That is what I have been working on once I finished all of the other monthly stuff that I work on. And my plans are, um, so I don't work tomorrow. So I have two more days of the, of the month. So I'm hoping to get the, egg, the fresh eggs done. I think that's what I'm going to concentrate on, on, concentrate on tomorrow. Because, again, I have the whole weekend to myself. I can do whatever I want. So I think I'm just going to pop in some movies and stitch tomorrow. Never do I get just a stitching weekend to myself. So, um. Yeah, my plan is to get the fresh egg farm, the fresh eggs, fresh eggs from three range Christmas collection done. Hopefully by the end of April. Um, what else do I have for you? Needle minders. Holy needle minders, I'm telling you. So I was watching Primitive Stitcher a couple of videos ago. And she showed these buttons she had gotten off of Etsy. And she had gotten them from a company called A Flare for Buttons. You get eight of these buttons for $6 and then shipping. So each of these needle minders cost me, I'm going to say about $1.25 to make. Super, super, super. Maybe a dollar fifty. I don't know. Maybe with the magnets, it was a dollar fifty. But anyway, so it, she, you can just from her, you just can buy the buttons, and I'll show you in a minute what I'm talking about. Um, pr but Primitive Stitcher had had bought had bought them, and she showed them, and she said she was going to make needle minders out of them. So I went onto the Etsy shop and I bought some. Now she has three different styles you can get. You can get the flat back ones, you can get the open back ones, or you can get the ones with a pin on them, and the pins are the ones so you can pin them on your shirt. Excuse me. Um, the first set I ordered were the flat back ones. That's the ones that Primitive Stitcher got. Those are the ones I ordered, because she, she's making, she was going to make them as needle minders. They came in, I ordered some magnets, and I had the bottle caps. I already had some of those. So I tried to make them with the flat backs. If you're going to order them, I suggest getting the open back ones because the flat backs, the buttons, they're flat on the back and they're metal, but on the front, they're kind of domed. So when you have the flat back on there, and then it's kind of domed. So there's an empty space in inside the button. And so you can put a magnet on the back. But even with the rare earth magnets, it's not strong enough to bring and hold the needle to the front of the button. So if you are going to, if you order some of these and you're going to make them, I suggest using the flat or getting the open back ones. Anyway, I'm going to show you. I have, okay, so I ended up, I'm telling you, so I bought the buttons, and I bought the magnets, and I already had the bottle caps. Well, then I started assembling them all, and I had extra magnets, so I decided to order more buttons. And I, and the first ones I ordered had the flat backs, so we had to take the backs off of them. So the second set I ordered, I ordered the open back ones. So then I got them in, I didn't have enough bottle caps. Because I didn't want to have anything left over. And I know that may sound crazy, but 
I probably would never use it for another project. So I decided, anyway, so I ended up ordering more ball caps. I ended up with a gazillion mag, um, needle minders. In the end, a gazillion of them. Yeah, probably not that many, but a lot. Um, I have, I gave some to my daughter. I kept, I'll show you the ones that I kept for myself. Um, I gave some to my daughter. I've sent some to some stitchy friends. I've sent some to people who have sent me gifts. I have sent some to, um, there was a retreat in Boise. There was a stitching retreat in Boise this weekend. I sent some to her to put in the, their goodie baskets or goodie bags that she was making. And I still have quite a few. So these are the ones that I kept. And these are not all of them because some of them I have on different projects. So I have, I can't remember the names of the sets. But this was a Christmas one. Um, and then I can't remember what the, what this one, something vintage, vintage wildlife or something. Um, and there's these ones. There's some cookies, macaroons. Is that what they're called? Pat a shoe. Cupcakes, chocolate. And there's some flowers and birds. Butterfly. Some of the bottle caps I did use the color that they were. Other ones I did spray paint. Um, I have a pig. I, these ones are so cute. They're called vintage animals, I think. There was a pig. There was a duck. A sheep. A cow. A chicken. I showed you the chicken. There's the pig. I kept the sheep one, and I think that was it. Then there's some bee ones. Yeah, it's kind of crooked. And there's those. These ones were really cute. They had different fruits and vegetables. They had carrots and corn, corn on the cob, peaches, um, blueberry, strawberry. Apple, I think I can't remember. There's a couple Thanksgiving ones. In the end, I think I ordered, ended up ordering, they come in sets of eight, and I think I ended up ordering like six sets of them. I ended up with a lot of needle minders, I'm telling you. Anyway, so I have something for you guys. So after, sorry husband's texting me he's back out on the road and he's had nothing but problems all day long his truck has broke down he's had a flat tire he's anyway and he sounds like he's about to where he's supposed to be anyway so I have some left and I want to share them with you I have um five of them left And, um, I'm telling you, they just stick together. So I have five of them left, and I'm going to do them as a giveaway. So, um, I will do the random number generator thing, um, before my next video. So, the day... So you can enter up until the day I do my video and then I will just pick some, you know, do the random number generator and I will pick five people. And um, you cannot say giveaway. Please do not say giveaway. Um, you must be 18 and a subscriber. I will check to make sure you're a subscriber because I want somebody who's going to use them, use them, or get them. I don't want some random person. Um, and I'm just going to randomly send them. So you won't, I mean, these are the ones I'm sending, but you won't know which one you're getting until you get them. I'm not going to let you have the choice of which one you want. I'm just going to send them. Um, so my next video, I'll announce the winners. So five people. 
Um, what else do I have? I did get a Stitch of Kindness. I actually got this in the mail, like, three weeks ago. Um, some of the stuff that she sent in the box I have used. Some stuff I haven't, so I have it right here. Um, because, I'm sorry, I'm not following the rule of you can't use it before you show it. Um, Lori Stitch from, um, I think it's called Stitching Moms. Lori, I'm sorry. Her and her husband do a floss tube channel together. Her husband stitches with her. Um, and anyway, she sent me some gifts. So she sent me this needle, or the scissor fob. Do the scissor fob and it's got a little Hershey kiss because she knows I love chocolate it's my jam her daughter makes these so she, her daughter made that for me and then of course she knows I like chocolate and I haven't eaten this and this this is something I did save which is very surprising um and then she's I had she sent me a couple of crocheted ornaments snowflake and a hat those are so cute so those are go I'll, those will go on my tree at christmas time and then she sent me this book it's all occasion charts it does have a full set of the alphabet in it and then it has there are some charts just some smalls and then she sent me some her and her husband dyed fabric so she sent me a couple of pieces of fabric that I can do some smalls on. There's that one and that one. So anyway, thank you, Lori. I've already sent her um, a text and an email and said thank you. And so she knows. She knows that I am very appreciative. Thank you. Um, I've gotten a little bit of haul, but not a whole lot. So, um, most of it I just, I put up, I think there's a couple of charts I got, I put up. I think I got the fragments in time in three and four because I already had one and two. And then I got these off of Etsy. And I just went into the Good House, Housewife, is that how you say it? Good Housewife? And onto her Etsy store and I ordered these. So I got those in the mail this week. And I think Priscilla is stitching these in her Stitch Mania plans. Um... Okay. Oh, I'm already at 45 minutes. I just have a couple of quick things to do. So I am going to be participating in a stitch along that starts on mm, Tuesday, May 1st. Um, I have a few that I'm going to start. I'm going to start one in May, one in, two in August, and one in September. And anyway, the one I'm starting in May. So when I start this other ones, I'll get closer to them. I'll let you know about those. But this one is, um, Lin I'm stitching this with Lynette from Homestead and on the home front. And Donna Ray, Flannel Jammy, Flannel, Flannel Jammy's Farm. Oh, I can never say that. Um, she's going to be stitching it. I'm not sure who else is doing it. But we are going to be starting... Sally Spencer by Birds of a Feather. Sally Sa Sally Spencer sampler. And the fabric I picked was just fabric I had in my stash. I believe it's going to be on this side. I can't decide which side I'm going to start it on. This 14 count Ada that I tea dyed. This is another one of the needle minders I made. Strawberry. So, um, Usually what I do is if I have the over dyed floss in my stash, I'll pull out and use what I have. And then I just substitute the MC for the rest. This one, so I was going through the, the list. This is a, these pictures are horrible, but right there. I was going through the, the list of what it called for of the fancy floss and I ended up having four of them. So, 
those are four that I'm using. Um, Buckeye Scarlet, Buttermilk, Black Crow, and Melon Patch. So then there's only two other colors, and I thought, okay, I'll just substitute, substitute the DMC for them. So I pulled the DMC floss, and it's supposed to be, I don't know if you can tell, but there's this, this blue and this blue. So there's two different blues. And, but the DMC equivalent for one of them was 501, which is, to, is a green color. And the other one was 598, which was an aqua color. And I'm like, nah, I don't think so. So the call fours are brother, Brethren Blue and Tropical Ocean. So I decided to go through my fancy floss again and see if I could find two blues that I could substitute for Brethren Blue and Tropical Ocean. And these are the two I found. So I'm going to substitute them out. So I'll be using Crystal Lake for Brethren Blue, which is the darker, and then Old Blue Paint for the tropical ocean. So I think those are all, those are gonna look nice. So very unusual that I have so many um, of the fancy floss. So we are gonna be starting that May 1st. Um, Lynette, I know you watch my videos. Is there a hashtag for it? I don't know, because I don't, I don't think you said in your last video. So if there's a hashtag, let me know. Okay, I think I'm done. I'm done for tonight. Um, so I think that's it. Yeah. I've gone over everything. I kind of already told you my plans. Um, I'm going to start the stitch along. Mother's Day, I'm going to start the Stony Creek. I don't think I have it right here. Um... I don't. I don't even know what I did with it. Maybe it's right here. No, I don't. I don't have it right here. So, so sorry. It's the Stony Creek one. I talked about it in my last video. And um, so if you want to know what I'm talking about, go watch, go watch my last video, which was what, April 7th. Um, but I'll show in my next video, I'll show you, but it's a, it's just, there's no stitch along. It's just something I was, I was just going through my, um, my charts looking for something and I came across it and I pulled it out and I thought, oh, I'm just going to, I'm going to stitch this. So, um, if you want to see it, you'll have to go back and watch my other video so you can see it and I'll show my progress next time. But anyway, so thanks for watching and, um, remember on the giveaway, um, I'll pick five people from the number generator thingy um my next video and and i will send you out the nail minders so have a good rest of your weekend and i will see you in hopefully a couple of weeks bye